So uh, today when um, we were greeting everybody and David came in, see, I heard a yes. Uh, David came in, I thought to myself, well, do you ever get that feeling when you meet somebody and you're like, wow, I, I'm just so connected to this person, great person, really great energy, and you're thinking, I could talk to this person for hours and hours and hours, and this morning when I met David Burke, I felt that way. So um, I know I have this piece of paper and I'm supposed to read it, so I'll read it, but I just have to say, it, there's those people in the world that I think you connect with and that you really think about, um, wow, I'd love to talk to you for hours and hours and hours because you're listening to me and you're actually looking at me and actually listening to me as I talk to you. So I'm, I'm very excited to have David today um, talk to you about gratitude. But um, So I'll read this little piece and then he can actually tell you what it's all about. Uh, David George Brook, that gratitude guy, has been a speaker, teacher, life coach, and best-selling author for over 25 years. Um, he's a former Nordstrom store manager, where was my discount when I needed it? Um, and he's managed in the corporate world for over 30 years. Um, he's published works, include the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal, Happiness Starts with Gratitude, and a number of other books on gratitude. He recently shared the stage with Bill Gates Sr. at a regional conference and is currently conducting keynotes and workshops for Special Olympics, Children's Hospital, DSHS, and our US military, to name a few. As a result of his passion for gratitude, he's presented over 250 speeches and workshops in the past three years. Wow, I'm tired of thinking about that. Um, and with over 600 gratitude videos posted on YouTube, thousands have seen his message, and he is now considered a leading authority on gratitude and how living a life of gratitude can enhance and improve your life. He resides in Issaquah, Washington. Please welcome David Brooke. I didn't get a chance to meet Sam and Heather, but Heather, thank you for those words, too. By show of hands, how many people here have suffered a significant personal loss in your life? It's about 80, 90%. I'm going to tell you briefly about my significant personal loss. First, I'll mention I'm fortunate enough to speak to high schools where the average age is about 17 to 18, and then I go to nursing homes where the average age is 90 to 95. High schools, half the people, half the kids raise their hands. Surprising to me. In the nursing homes, you can imagine, it's almost every single person. September 29th, 1998 was a Tuesday. I woke up about 6.30 and I looked in the bed next to me and my wife Dana wasn't there. That's funny, I wonder where Dana is. Connor, my four-year-old, comes running in. Where's mommy? I don't know. Kyle, my 14-year-old, same question, we don't know. We walk down the hallway. We look in a couple of rooms, we can't see her anywhere. We finally go down to the end of the hallway, we look downstairs in the laundry room in front of the washer and dryer. Here's Dana. She's all crumpled over and she doesn't look good. And we go running down there. I turn her over, there's all this stuff coming out of her mouth. Connor starts crying. I said, Kyle, go call the police, call fire, call medics, call whoever you can. In the matter of about two or three minutes, it seemed like we must have had 25, 30 people in our house. They had those wires and those paddles and bags and fluid and all this kind of thing. Connor couldn't stop crying. Kyle's inconsolable. They're working on her. And for those of you that have ever been through something like this, and there's always many. When I, I love doing these talks. I'm fortunate enough to do them several times a week. But I always enjoy hearing some of the stories that people will tell me over at one of the tables or one of the workshops later about what they went through. But one of the things that will happen is your time frame it gets all messed up. You lose all track and time has no measure. This little fire person comes over to me and she says, Mr. Brooke, we've been working on Dana for an hour and a half. We still don't have a heartbeat. Would you like us to continue? And even though this little CPU up here is in shock, it still manages to compute a little bit. And I went 90 minutes, no heartbeat. And I said, no, you can stop. And she was dead. She was 38 years old. Connor was four, as I mentioned, Kyle was 14. What made it such a challenge for me is that was not the first significant loss I had su suffered in my life. My father chose to end his life with a shotgun when I was younger. My mother died of cancer. Two of my best buddies died the night we graduated from Queen High School. More guys in Vietnam, more friends, more people, more relatives. And at some point, I said, I am going to have to figure out how to cope with life. When 
When I go into those high schools, I go like this. I say, listen, you guys and gals, this is life. This is no fun. This is a lot of fun. This is where the lessons are learned. And then here's where you want to be again. But here's where you're going to really find out what you're made of. So as I thought about it, I walked up the deck about two or three days after Dana died. And I was still kind of in shock. And I pinched myself. thought, I don't think I can do this. We live by Green Lake, right near Blanchette. Just one mile to the Aurora Bridge. All I have to do is walk over there, step off, and I'm out of pain. So I thought about it for a few minutes. And I made a decision not to do that. I'm not going to kill myself. They've already lost their mother. Oh, now their dad's going to jump off the Aurora Bridge. And I'm going to need something to help me along the way. And so one of the very first things I realized, it all depends on how you look at something. I'd like you to all stand up if you would. What I'd like you to do, I'd like you to raise your right arm and start turning in a clockwise manner. Now there's no clock here, so you can imagine in the high schools, they're all confused. So I have, I have to go like this. What is clockwise? So just get going clockwise and keep it stretched out. Now keep it going clockwise. Now just start bringing it slowly down. Slowly down, keep it going clockwise, get it to your eyes, your nose, your chin, your chest, and now your waist. Now what direction is it going? Counterclockwise, Heather, you can sit down. See, I knew this, when you said those nice things about me, I knew you did. And see, there's always a few people, I don't like to point them out, but it, it, it just makes me feel, so there's, a few, there's a couple ladies back here going, what, what just happened? It's just my way of saying it depends on how you look at something. I could go out and there's no glasses here, a few. Glass half full or half empty. But it just depends on how you look at something. It's your choice. Happiness is a choice. Gratitude is a choice. Your life choices about work, personal, professional, whatever, all choices. When I manage those Nordstrom stores, all these employees would come and talk to me and they start a sentence with, Mr. Brooke, you don't understand. And by the time I got to the word understand, the conversation was over. Because I knew an excuse was coming. But it depends on how you look at something. So if you decide that you get a choice, you can make that choice to go up or down. But I contend you need tools in the toolkit. So one of the things I found is embracing gratitude. Heather mentioned it. Rob, I think, mentioned it. As well in the bio. Because I was going to have to find something, some sort of tool that was going to help me. And by the way, it's funny. Even people you've known forever, my fraternity brothers, there's like four or five of us, we get together once a month, and one of them says to me about a month ago, you know, I saw your little presentation. <laughs> Frankly, I wasn't that impressed. <laughs> and then he goes, so how does this work? <laughs> well, if you're so unimpressed, why do you have to ask me such a simple question like that, Gary? <laughs> so, do you want to say his name? But embracing gratitude is a choice. I'm going to talk about five things today. Embracing gratitude, it takes as long as it takes, never give up. Choose gratitude and never, ever, ever give up. Get a gratitude journal and share gratitude. I'm gonna toss in one more for good measure later. But when you embrace gratitude, it tells you to focus on what you have versus what you don't have. You look in that video, you see some of the choices. We didn't know we were pregnant, she was young. These things happen. Well, now you've got the choice. You're gonna raise the baby, or you're gonna do something else, or so forth. We're always faced with choices all the time. So embracing gratitude is something that just basically completely transformed and changed my life. So in the center of the table, you see some three by five cards. Grab a card. And there should be enough in here. You need a partner for this. You all have pens, so you need to partner up. There's no three-way partnerships. It's gotta be two people, so somebody may have to move tables, possibly. And that little card right there, it says the broker at the top and so forth. So get your pen and paper and get your partner. Does everybody have a partner? Okay, here's what I'd like you to do. The upper left-hand corner, I want you to write these four words. I see you as. I see you as. Those four words, upper left-hand corner of that 3 by 5 card. For those of you that are speedy, the upper right hand corner, write your partner's name. And lastly, lower right hand corner, sign your name. 
sign it, print it, write it, what have you. Now, whether this partner, whether you've never met them before or not, or it's your best friend, makes no difference. I love, love, love this exercise. I'm gonna give you 60 seconds on the little timer here, and I want you to write how you see that person. Adjectives, I see you as happy, I see you as energetic, I see you as whatever, 60 seconds, and many things you can go. 